Well, hello, ladies and gentlemen, wherever you are in the world. My name's John Harris from the Chartered Institute of Logistics and Transport, and I'm the international education lead there. We've got a special guest with us as part of our run up for the Central Asia Trade Forum 2021. And you will be able to hear more from Amar More on the special panel taking place on day three, and that's Wednesday, the 6th of October. But in the meantime, a very warm welcome. Hello, Amar. Hey, very good morning, John. Very nice to talk to you. Thank you for okay. having me. Well, thank you. We're delighted to have you on the panel uh, on the upcoming uh, transport and logistics uh, session. We're going to be looking quite a bit around digitalization and trade. And uh, that's one of the reasons, of course, we've invited you along. So um, with no more ado, this is uh, Amar More from Kale Logistics, um, based in India, uh, but working right across um, uh, Asia and has a real wealth of experience within logistics and supply chain. So let's kick off, if we can, Amar, with your first question. Sure, sure, John. Looking no forward. worries. So just tell us a little bit about yourself, uh, Amar, and your background in logistics and all things digital. Just give us a bit of a rundown. Absolutely. So, uh, so I'm the uh, director and CEO, and I always joke and say CEO means chief entertainment officer, right? <laughs> <laughs> of Kale Logistics Solutions. We are right. essentially a, a technology company focused on providing solutions to the logistics industry. So that's our focus. We don't do anything else. And our focus is uh, on building uh, trade facilitation platforms for the logistics industry. Uh, Kali Logistics, obviously, for last uh, 10 years, has been serving industry, uh, 30 countries across the world, 4,500 customers, uh, offices in uh, five continents. So we have grown uh, uh, quite a lot in the recent years. Personally, well, I'm an electrical engineer uh, with MBA in supply chain management and logistics. Uh, and, uh, you know, I work very closely uh, with the industry on several digitization initiatives. So. I'm the domain coordinator of the cross-border management domain at the United Nations Economic Commission uh, of Europe. Um, I, I, I was the chairman of the uh, Asia-Pacific chapter of International Port Community Systems Association. Uh, I am one of the board members representing technology on the board of the International Air Cargo Association uh, called TIACA, which is headquartered in Miami. And obviously with CILT, I have a great association as well. So I was in 2009, I was the first Indian uh, to get uh, International Young Achiever Award from CILT. And I'm a fellow member of CILT and on the National uh, Committee of uh, CILT India. So that's a little bit about, uh, you know, what Kali Logistics is and who I am. So we are essentially committed to raising the digitization levels in the global logistics industry. That's our mission. Excellent. Um, well, wow, what, what, what a set of achievements uh, you, you've got there. Uh, and of course, a sense of humor about being the CEO. So uh, great that you're with us. Um, one of the things that you kind of described there was about, you know, your specialist, your niche, you're dealing with this kind of glue business around digital and trade. So. We know you're really passionate about the cargo community and um, port community systems is one of your kind of special areas. So I'm just going to ask a little bit about that. Can you tell us a little bit about um, your approach there around port community system and what, what are the problems that you're trying to solve? Absolutely, absolutely. So uh, in fact, you know, this is just the right time to discuss this subject. And I'm glad that we're gonna talk about this subject in uh, much more detail. But, you know, as, as I always tell my team, you know, building digital logistics communities is not our business, but it's our passion. And, uh, you know, I, let me tell you why. Okay, if you take a simple air cargo shipment, you know, one international air cargo shipment, it's, it is accompanied by, 30 types of documents and 124 copies of paper, right? And, and John, who better than you knows uh, that in the logistics industry, you have so many stakeholders and each stakeholder over a period of time has created some document or the other for himself. And you know what's the most funny part of it? 
most of the data across this 124 copies of paper is the same, right? Uh, shipper name and address, consignee name and address, number of packages, weight, volume, it's just the same. And we have so many, and, and on the ocean side, the story is no different. 41 types of documents, 200 plus copies of paper, just to move one shipment, right? So the problem that we are trying to solve is, you know, when today we have the technology where this data can be reused, do we need so much uh, of documentation, you know? And, and a paper is not just a paper, you know, some people just misunderstand it. A paper is an instrument for delay, in some cases, corruption, and all of that leads to increase in the logistics cost. And when the logistics cost increase, the product cost increases, and that reduces the country's import export competitiveness, right? So, so the, the idea of creating a common platform, you know, so that it can be accessed by different companies is essentially so that the data that is created by one party in the supply chain can be moved over to the other party seamlessly so that they don't have to recreate that data. And we get rid of that paper because today that data gets onto a paper, paper goes somewhere, and then that data is recreated, right? So, so when, when you have a system like this, you eliminate a lot of unnecessary paperwork. You bring in the supply chain visibility, which is so critical because if you don't have supply chain visibility, then what you're talking about is higher inventory in the supply chain because you don't want the assembly lines to shut down, uh, you know, because the goods don't reach on time, right? And again, higher costs of the product, right? So because this, this community is connected through a common digital platform, everybody has the same view of shipment. So there is a transparency in the supply chain. We spoke about efficiency, then security. Today, the airports have no idea what is coming to their facility. Then they actually host billions of dollars of assets, right? All these aircrafts that are parked there. And when you have community systems like this, the airports actually know in advance, you know, what's coming in. And that, that kind of uh, helps in security. Okay, you know, customer satisfaction, you know, making sure that uh, you're able to keep the customer updated, uh, you know, on the shipment status. So what happens? when you connect this ecosystem through a common platform, and don't get me wrong, it doesn't mean people give away what they have today. They continue to have what they have today, but they just connect to this common platform so that uh, the data can be exchanged. And you know, these this community systems uh, have tremendous sustainability value. I mean, we are, we are just doing a few use cases in one uh, airport, uh, and that just that airport by eliminating six copies of paper per shipment, we're talking about eliminating 8 million copies of paper per annum, that stand amount to 1500 trees per annum per airport. Yeah. Now that's, that, so, so that, that is what the community system is all about. Now, uh, very quickly on the challenges, I think, uh, uh, you know, people, first of all, find it difficult to believe that, you know, everybody can use a common platform, but, but we all know that port community systems existed in the past and they continue to exist in the future. Just that in the past, the focus had always been limited to what happens at the port, you know, just, just between port, uh, shipping line and customs or airline and customs and forwarder and customs and forwarder and shipping line, just three, four transactions. But the next generation of community systems that are being proliferated now, right? They connect the wider community. They get importer exporter on the board. They get the truckers on the board. You have the the usual suspects of you know airlines, uh, freight forwarders, or shipping lines, container freight stations, and you create a wider community so that data can be exchanged seamlessly, and it will deliver the benefits that we are talking about. Right? The challenges uh, are around education, around telling people that. You know, you are not giving away what you have. You're not changing anything. You're just connecting yourself to the wider ecosystem. And that's the way to go. Excellent. No, thank you. A really comprehensive answer. I mean, what I'm hearing there is it's all about smoothing out the supply chain. It's de-risking. It's making really good business sense um, to do this. And it's making sure there's one version of the truth, which is the, you know, the digital footprint. Uh, of, of what you're moving rather than multiple pieces of paper where mistakes can be made. So let's just move on to that. So 
obviously you are a technology and digital specialist. So how do you see the latest technologies impacting on that port community agenda? Do you think there will be fast changes in international trade patterns because of the technology available or do you think it, it will be a more modest uh, pace? Well, our industry, John, has been <laughs> extremely slow. And as they say that, you know, logistics is the last dark continent for technology because yeah. <laughs> financial markets, telecom, you know, they've lapped up technology uh, much faster than, uh, <coughs> excuse me, what we have done in logistics, right? But I see, I see, uh, you know, us, you know, breaking through that uh, glass ceiling now, you know, the logistics industry is really, as I always say, on the runway about to take off, right? Because when you have, when you have technologies, uh, you know, that can actually connect uh, uh, different entities and, you know, add to that uh, a concoction of artificial intelligence, machine learning, you know, blockchain, drones, Internet of Things, you know, what we will really see uh, will be a transformation as opposed to incremental improvement, right? Because all of these different technologies, and I'll, I'll come to that answer a little later, but all of these different technologies working with a community, a digital community that's connected, actually transform the processes. So whatever hasn't been done for last, uh, you know, 25, 30 years, could actually be done, uh, you know, pretty quickly. I always say that uh, each uh, adversity brings up an opportunity and uh, pandemic is one such adversity, right? I mean, we saw uh, somebody who is in the technology field. What we saw was that in last one and a half years, we had three, four years of digitization packed into one, right? People could work from wherever they were, uh, you know, they could still conduct their meetings without traveling so on and so forth and even even uh, to uh, uh, save people's lives right i mean hats off to the logistics industry if it wasn't there there would have been at least fifty thousand more deaths uh, if not more right so people have adopted technology uh, to make sure uh, that cargo moves faster medicines and you know pharmaceutical goods could move, could move faster so uh, i feel that there is tremendous potential of artificial intelligence uh, you know blockchain uh, IoT for sure, and I'll talk about you know specifics of each of these uh, technologies and how they are useful. Uh, uh, you know, obviously in my speech, but also in our subsequent conversation. Excellent, thanks, uh, Ema. I mean, when you talk about that port community and it being transformed, is that only point to point? Is that by kind of trade corridor, or or do you see this port community? agenda impacting on different types of movement? Uh, so, uh, so John, uh, you know, this, this whole, uh, whole thing around port community, uh, let's look at it this way, right? I mean, uh, you have a port or an airport and you have different stakeholders like exporters, importers, mm -hmm. freight forwarders, customs brokers. And through this port community platform, you just connect this community together, right? But that's one level of automation. You finally need to connect to your trade partners, right? So there are, let's say, you know, uh, uh, let's say United Kingdom, uh, let's say India is a major trade partner or the United States is a major trade partner. Now you take the ports there or airports there. You've created communities there. If you could link the two, then the exporter in, um, uh, in United Kingdom could know what's happening when the shipment goes to the United States or to India and vice versa. So this whole concept of digital corridors and, and we actually created world's first air freight digital corridor uh, between the two airports or you know two countries. So this corridor where information from one community gets on to another is the next stage of automation. And and you, uh, you know, it will be impractical to think that everyone will be connected uh, very quickly, but you should identify, you should do 80-20 analysis. You should look at those 80% ports or airports that you do majority of the business with and how can you connect uh, them using, uh, you know, technology or digital technology or digital corridors. And, and this is one use case where we have used blockchain. So we use Microsoft's Coda blockchain to connect the two airports, right? So that's something that is uh, 
that is likely to happen and that's the way to go. Okay, thanks. So that was a really good answer and very helpful. Put that very simply, but um, yeah, through these effective um, technology breakthroughs, we, we can just make the world smaller, can't we? And information can help us be much more transparent about where the goods are, what they're doing, what state uh, they are in the process. Final question, because um, the time has flown. Given your wide background in technology, where do you see the big changes in the next five years? Now, you can answer this within the context of blockchain, um, automation, but have a think. What about Central Asia? What about global? What, what's your thoughts on that, Amar? Absolutely. So Central Asia, I think, uh, is a very important region, right? And it's, it's largely landlocked region. And, uh, you know, for it to uh, have... Uh, uh, you know, uh, exploit all the benefits of technology. One thing that we see that will happen in Central Asia is creation of these community platforms and then the digital corridors to link them to the countries that are, you know, that they do most business with or link them to the countries that they intend to do more business with because that's how prosperity will come. That's where logistics will grow, right? So this is definitely going to happen. Globally, uh, you know, let me let me just uh, put maybe probably a, a one or two use cases of these different technologies. So artificial intelligence, we see uh, artificial intelligence being used in intelligent, you know, truck slot management at ports or airports. You know, that's where you could use it. You could use machine learning, wherein you can, uh, you know, convert this paper uh, data into machine data by training the machines on how to read the data, you know, robotics process automation and uh, machine learning uh, that could uh, facilitate uh, digitization of documentation, right? Internet of things, you know, tracking temperatures of farmer shipments, right? When they're moving, okay? So the sensors capturing these uh, uh, temperatures and then kind of, uh, you know, moving it onto the community platforms. That's how it will be used or geofencing, telling truckers which slot to go to, which dock to go to when the trucker enters a geofenced area. That's IoT for you. Blockchain, as I mentioned, maybe digital corridors, drones for last mile deliveries and drones can also be used uh, within the warehouse for security purposes uh, uh, and inventory management as well. So this is, you know, the answer to your question is a little long and maybe I'll answer that during the panel that we have. But yeah, this is just to give you a flavor of how these different technologies are shaping the logistics industry and are going to shape uh, the industry in future. Okay, well, thank you, Ama. I mean, that's been a real kind of fast journey through this whole area of digitalization of port community and some future thinking from you as well. A big, big thank you, Ama. just to remind everybody that Amar will be appearing on our guest panel uh, with the CLT and uh, Central Asia Trade Forum on Wednesday, the 6th of um, October, uh, and that's in the afternoon Kazakhstan time. You'll also hear um, a, a mini keynote speech from Amar. So if this has inspired you to learn more about the port community and how that all fits, please do uh, book to come along. All that remains me to do is once again say a very big thank you to Amar More uh, from Calais Logistics. We're really looking forward to sharing the stage with you um, in early October. Thank you, Amar. Thank you so much, John. Mm -hmm.